Whoa, whoa, Grandpa, tell me about the good old oh. days. There was a, this was on Saturday mornings, or was it Sunday mornings? It was a syndicated show called I think it was like Saturday afternoons, and it was on Sci-Fi, wasn't it? It was on, no, I it may have moved to Sci-Fi later on. It was on, Um, I think it was on like uh, whatever UPN was before UPN existed. And <sighs> they, they would show. It was show... so much better when it was UPN, I gotta say. Yeah, and basically it was, uh, you know, it was about these uh, two American kids. Their mom got a job working over, I guess, in Transylvania. Well, was, I don't know. Luxembourg. It was filmed in Luxembourg. Filmed in the Luxembourg, uncle was from yeah. Germany. I, I don't. Really well, whatever. Know. In, in, in some European country I'd never heard. Yeah. Of, okay. And uh, also, who runs a business in this European country is a man by the name of Alexander Lucard, right. who uh, is never really seen during the daylight and um, has a sensitivity to sunlight and may just want to suck your blood. Okay. Yeah, it's Dracula. Exactly. He's been alive all along. And I think their uncle Gustav, who they're staying with, he. Um, he was um uh he was like uh, Van Helsing's like uh, great great grandson or something yep, right I think exactly yeah exactly right and uh it was all about Dracula in the modern age and it, it was kind of a goofy kids show but it worked and it was creepy in its own right and the guy that got to play Dracula nailed it he completely nailed it so, I, I need to find so the shtick on this thing was I I mean I remember it being very similar to and and having seen it again more recently very much drawing cues from monster squad from lost boys yeah um, yeah a lot of those tropes and here's another interesting thing a lot of these actors that were in the show went on to do other vampire things uh the one that played um the uh, uh uncle Gusoff's son who became becomes a vampire he went on to be uh, nick knight in forever night huh um i i can't yeah well i know that the the girl the the love interest for the for the eldest boy uh she grew up to be uh amanda grayson on this star trek discovery poor thing um but, she was uh, she was also on um no, but she was also uh, she was also one of the Crow movies, so she had kind of the whole goth thing going on. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. And 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 a lot of them showed up on 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 subsequent. Uh, uh, one of them ended up on Vampire Diaries too. I mean, and there was an, a, another element of this, although it was like eight years before it. Uh, in in ninety nine, there was a show called Kindred: The Embraced. Uh, yes, that was also yes. about vampires. Very similar kind of feel and formula to it. Yeah, uh, I could almost picture them being in the same, you know, world, so to speak. But this, this, it was 1990, the, it was the 1990 to 1991 season. And it doesn't, let's face it, it's early enough in the 90s that it doesn't have that 90s feel to it. It's still a late 80s kind of feel. Yeah, it's, it's, it's that weird late 80s, early 90s yeah. feel that was its own thing. Because I, I had a suspicion that the 90s was going to take on a whole different, I think I've even brought this on the stream before, a whole different um, uh, a feel to it. And then the uh, big recession happened and then it was all about grunge music and everything else because everybody was depressed. And then yeah. we came around with the dot-com bubble. But the, uh, well, we didn't really, but, you know, we thought we did. Anyway, but the point is, is that... Well, that's why that, it was called a bubble. <laughs> like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, especially the late 80s, I see that yeah. as kind of that that late 80s, early 90s thing. Parker Lewis Can't Lose, the right. show that that embodied that whole era. Um, New Jack City. Yeah. Uh, that movie that it had all that that kind of like um but um but the, i just so the, the one of the wonderful things about the interwebs these days is we're talking about this show and boomer says hey remember this yeah i, I remember it and then in 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 uh private chat he sends me a link to a uh uh a youtube playlist oh, and it's oh. the whole the whole one season of 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 this dracula and so today i just sat and i watched the first 10 of what? how many episodes these are yeah i tried watching the episode i showed you and i didn't have time okay <laughs> uh you know and what's funny about it is it's so cringy it is so it is so uh, pg-13 maybe not even pg-13 pg-ish yes um it's it's 
melodramatic and some of the dialogue is just <laughs> over the top it's just although like you said the the guy playing dracula he takes it seriously and over the top when he's supposed to he plays it cool and humorous when he's supposed to he does a great job he really really does um kind of makes you like the character you know as much as there is no doubt he's a villain he's he's just He's a villain. He's he's charming. They you play him, him as an absolute evil. I mean, there's even one. This psychic is like, I sense a great evil. He's like, oh, really? Do you know where this evil is coming from? <laughs> yes. He, no, he. Oh, man. I, I I think there was even a romantic interest thing with him one time. And that still went sour because he's still evil. Yeah. I think that happened one episode. I, I, I My favorite episode, I think, was the episode with the vampire gun. How that that goofy that guy actually with is the in two thing. episodes because they follow that one they up. They did again follow later. it up. Yeah, yeah, there's a scientist, and he actually says, "You know, I know you like Wolf's Bane and garlic and all this stuff, but you know, we have science now to stop the vampires." And he created a gun that could basically shoot sunlight. Wasn't that what it is? And you can kill the vampire yeah. that way. It's like concentrated sunlight. And then at the end of the episode, he tries it on like one of uh, Alexander Dr 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 Dracula. I like keep calling him Alexander yeah. Lacard's, uh, you know, underlings, and it doesn't work. Yeah. And then like the guy's like talking to him at the end. Ah, it turns out that guy was a bungler after all. And then suddenly he's like, wait a minute. Uh, and then he explodes into, yeah. he bursts into, into flame. And then Dracula realizes, oh, this gun actually does work. How interesting. And then he throws it in the fireplace. And then right. later on, he says, that was a, that was a mistake. That was hasty because I have this thing. I can take out any other vampire I want. Exactly. You know? So exactly. I can be the Lord of well, the Well, the, the shtick of it was, he's yeah. like, He's like, oh, so he wasn't so bumbling after all. Lucard, you own the world's only delayed action vampire gun. And that's <laughs> when he destroys it. And then, yeah, later episode, he kidnaps the guy and forces him to remake it because he's like, yeah, I could I could definitely use this. Although he, he accidentally improved it because it works instantly now. Yeah, because uh, they would have other vampires show up on the show, like Nosferatu showed up on the show. Yeah, and, and it <laughs> bothered me that instead of referring to him as Count Orlock, which would have been the smarter way, oh, Nosferatu. It's like, no, I mean, would anyone call you vampire? I mean. I know. I it, it's, it's a it's a kid's show. Okay. Kind of. That's how it, <laughs> yeah, you're kind of right. Although, I, I, when I rewatch this now as an adult, Two things, two things mm -hmm. stand out to me. First, what? what way hokier than I remember it being as a kid does not hold up the same for an adult as it did for a kid in the 90s. Um, but that being said, there's also some undertones of implied story that only an adult would get. There's um when they first introduce um Gustav's son, I, I forget Klaus mm -hmm. or something like yeah, that. Yeah, Klaus, yes. Um he he is obviously an underling to to Lacard because you know Lacard turned him into a vampire. Yeah, but there's a little bit of an insinuation there about their relationship, not overt at all, but it's kind of there. If if oh, you, you know. and okay. even more so when the Contessa, whatever her, her name is, later on is palling around with the the girl the main girl from the show and wants to make her, her protege. There's very clearly a Carmilla thing going on there, you know, even more overt. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> I did not catch that back in the nineties. I, I, I didn't either. I didn't either. I, I remember there was always the kind of romance between the older brother and the girl, but it was always on and off. Because, and that like, was so sweet. Yeah. You know, cause I don't know if he was just shy or something like she was very forward in the beginning and I'm, you know well they they, they play it very, kind of very weird. pretty like, young it's like woman they're not and, in the same place at the same time all right the time, so and yeah. then his ex-girlfriend shows up and then that messed things up i remember that and that was just you know <laughs> there was a lot of ways that show could have gone i mean i i really do wish it would have gotten a second season but from what i understand some things went south behind the scenes and they lost funding and oh, really? they okay. literally did not have budget to make a second season and it just never ha happened <laughs> Early 90s syndicated shows were weird. This yes, is why TNG yes, was were. as huge as it was because TNG was like a big budget, spectacular 
compared to all the other syndicated shows. You understand? Let me let me just say, <laughs> was so I am so glad that this this Dracula show followed that that late 80s early 90s formula where they give you like a prologue before you get the opening credits yeah because if you started with those opening credits i never would have made it through i mean it starts out with this music that i swear sounds like weird science it and does the, and the only words are drag 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 drag, 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 drag oh for out loud stop please this it's so terrible. corny and it's one of those things even when you are a kid you're like turning your head around to make sure no one's in the room Right. Or your, your older sibling exactly. or, or even so a parent somebody, comes somebody in. Somebody be laughing at me about and laughs, it. You're watching that stupid show. Oh, worse yet, your mother and comes and in and goes, hey, who's that? He's cute. Oh, God. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, that happened to me. No, you can't You can't do that. That was me and Saved by the Bell. I can't know. I don't. I'm not watching this around my parents. Okay. I used to watch Saved, kinda by, the saved by the Bell. Kind of got a Saved by the Bell kind of feel to it, too. Yeah. Now that you mentioned it. It, it. did. And it was just Saved by the Bell. With vampires. <laughs> Save by the bell with vampires. There you go. That's how it was That's pitched. Basically, okay. basically how it is. It's it's absolutely right. Yeah, I, I recommend you. It's out there for free on YouTube. Go check it out, people. Yeah, just type in Dracula the series. I get a kick out of it. And I know, and that I wonder I brought that up though, because we were watching Dracula and told the thing where Dracula turns into the bunch of bats. And I'm saying yeah. That was on that Dracula yes, TV show, and he turn, I, and he does that. And even though it's kind of a cheap effect, I still liked it when I was a kid because around it was around that time too. I was getting really into those Castlevania games, and I'm yeah. like watching the show about Dracula too. I'm like, I'm all about. I think Dark Shadows was that on that year or the year prior the redone series, which I loved. The they one with Ben that Cross. Off the month Ben Cross. I used to watch that. I was was into like the the gothic vampires, the creepy villain gothic vampire stuff, and then we it kind of. We kind of lost that, but anyway, uh, an hour like 2004, wasn't it? What the Ben Cross show? No, yeah, wasn't it? No, Ben Cross show premiered actually. Uh, no, you're you were absolutely right. It the came night out of the, Iraq the year War. after it came out the year after uh, uh, Dracula. The, that's what happened. Series. That's what happened because I lost Dracula, but then I got Dark Shadows. I'm like, okay, cool. This is cool. And then that gets taken off the air. See, kids, you have to understand that back in the old days, things didn't get greenlit for season twos and threes like some series nowadays do, like um, <clears throat> Bat Batwoman. Okay. Yeah. Um, back then, um, you were lucky if you watched anything that was uh quote unquote escapist or genre, yeah. it got yanked off the TV like that okay well, you were lucky if it made a full in, season in fairness it had to it had to be high in the ratings yes and it had to be pulling a profit yeah imagine that imagine having to be a success before you get a second season none of this oh we're losing money and nobody's watching it but we've already signed up for a third and fourth season because yeah my representation Pro you know. I, I'm suspecting that's what this is all about, but um and uh yeah and uh like I remember when the X Files premiered, I'm like um this is a great show, it's gonna last a few episodes, and I didn't realize it was gonna become the phenomenon that it did. And when the X Files took off, that's when TV changed. Okay, yeah, that was really the moment. Um, because uh, uh then then television networks started taking more risks, and you started getting better shows. And now we're kind of, I think, at the tail end of that experiment where we're getting all these quote unquote escapist series, but well, they're not really. And that that's good. why geezers okay. like us do this kind of reminiscing about mm -hmm. some great stuff that we miss, stuff that I don't feel ever got it, its fair shake. You know, another show this kind of reminds me of is Friday the 13th, the series. Very similar formula, you know? Oh, that was harder to watch. They had that on Amazon Prime for a while, and I was watching it, but uh, it, <laughs> dude, I don't know, it, it was a weird series. Dude, what you, yeah, I got two words for you. Yeah, Louise Robe. Oh, the the actress. Yes, mm -hmm. I liked her a lot. That was another one I had a crush on when I was a kid. Yeah, you, you and every other guy our age. Yeah, <laughs> wow, yeah. and that, some women. <laughs>